As far as I'm concerned, this is the end. A Christmas. Well, I'm not standing for it. I've left it. Like no other. Get away from me! Coronation Street Christmas Day at 7. Now you can hear me. Good evening, this is Carlton. Remember, news from across our region is at 6 o'clock in London tonight. It follows ITN. From the studios of ITN, the early evening news with John Suchet. Good evening. The government is reeling tonight after the sudden resignations of two senior ministers which left Westminster stunned. First to go, Peter Mandelson, the Trade and Industry Secretary. A few hours later, the Paymaster General, Geoffrey Robinson. It was the dramatic result of the row over Mr Robinson's home loan to Mr Mandelson. Mr Mandelson said he went because he had made an error of judgement and he didn't want that to damage the government. Tony Blair said that without Mr Mandelson, there wouldn't have been new Labour. Our political correspondent, Harry Smith, reports now on a day of extraordinary political drama. Peter Mandelson left his controversial West London home this morning, knowing he was already on the way out of government. He telephoned the Prime Minister at Chequers the previous evening, saying he felt he should resign. The Prime Minister asked him to sleep on it. Having done that, his mind was made up. Both men must have been influenced by the morning headlines. Every paper led on the story, tabloids and broadsheets. Further questions about Mr Mandelson's financial affairs were raised. Some papers called for the Trade and Industry Secretary to go. When he did, the sense of disbelief was reflected in the resignation letter. I can scarcely believe I am writing this letter to you, he said. I do not believe I have done anything wrong or improper, but I should not, with all candour, have entered into the arrangement. I should, having done so, told you and the other colleagues whose advice I value. The Prime Minister wrote in reply, You will know better than anyone the feeling with which I write to you. It is no exaggeration to say that without your support and advice, we would never have built new Labour. The opposition welcomed his resignation but said he should have gone sooner. The Prime Minister yesterday was pretending that this code of uh, conduct had been adhered to and it manifestly had not. Peter Mandelson had concealed from the Permanent Secretary a massive loan and obligation to a man being investigated by his department. And the Prime Minister had the cheek to say that the rules were being adhered to. They must be applied rigidly and without elasticity. In Labour ranks, there's still disbelief that their supreme doctor of spin has fallen. I think a number of us were sort of amazed that Peter could have walked into this one, and it's, that's what makes it sad in a way. But I've, you know, I've said on a number of occasions, sometimes the areas where we're best at, we make our biggest mistakes. It's a curiosity of politics. Paddy Ashdown praised one departing minister and attacked the other. I commend Mr Maddelson for acting swiftly, honourably, to protect the reputation of the government, he serves, and indeed his own reputation as well, and I think that's a good thing. On the other hand, uh, the case of Mr Robinson, who I understand has also resigned, and I'm glad that that's happened, but it's taken a very long time to happen, does not mean that they've got everything right. It was not until later that Paymaster General Geoffrey Robinson resigned, a large smile on his face as he was driven from the Treasury. Arriving at the door of his Park Lane apartment, he had little to add to his resignation statement. Well, my thoughts are on getting home and having a nice Christmas. I hope that would be very good. Do you accept that uh, after events over the last 24 hours that your position now was untenable? Well, uh, I don't think I need comment on that. I've resigned and made clear the reason for resigning, and I think that's all I need to say. With that, he paused for one more set of pictures before returning to his apartment. The Prime Minister, meanwhile, was at Chequers preparing for Christmas, knowing that his government, which came to power promising to be whiter than white, has now been forced to ditch two ministers in one day. Harry Smith, ITN. After his dramatic resignation at lunchtime, Peter Mandelson gave his first interview to our political editor, Michael Brunson. He asked Mr Mandelson to explain why he had resigned. I think that in politics, and with this government in particular, after all, New Labour was elected uh, saying that after all this time, all these years of falling standards in public life, we were going to make a real difference. And therefore, I think for this government in particular, we not only have to act properly and behave properly, as I believe I have done, but on all occasions be seen to act properly. And I feel that uh, as a result of my actions or as a way in which they were presented, uh, people would have concluded that we had fallen below the standards, and I had fallen below the standards expected of this government, 
uh, and I felt it necessary to pay a very big price for that. People have expressed amazement that you, as they put it, the master of spin, didn't see the risk in perhaps even having so huge a loan, point one, and having taken it from Geoffrey Robinson, point two. I think I didn't think about it, didn't think it through, didn't focus you know, on the uh, implications, the way in which it would look uh, to the public uh, in the way that I should have done. And in that sense, it was imprudent. But since then, um, I think the, where I went wrong, I think the misjudgment uh, that, uh, that, that I took was in you know, not taking the precautions, if you like, uh, against the time when this became public knowledge. Yes, but there's the other point of the Code of Conduct for Ministers, which says that if there's any doubt at all, mm. whether or not there's an inquiry going on with Mr. Robinson, you should have mm. gone to the Permanent Secretary and at least sought his advice and said mm. why you're not doing anything. Mm. Do you think well, you've got that wrong now? I think I did get that wrong, and what I should have done is having stood aside, having made it clear to my permanent secretary and my officials that I wanted nothing to do with this inquiry, that it, it should be left entirely to officials, I should then, a little alarm bell should have gone off in my head, and I should then have gone on and said to my permanent secretary, look, by the way, it makes no material difference because I've already decided to stand aside, but the appearance might be created that whilst this inquiry is going on in the DTI, mm. I have this loan, I am the secretary of state, People might put those two things together uh, and may feel that, you know, it, it's unacceptable. Now, I should have foreseen that well, and I should have taken... explain now why the alarm, the alarm bell didn't go off? I can't explain, no. Was there or is there a problem over what you set out on the mortgage application form, perhaps not disclosing the fact that you had another loan? I, I don't, to be honest, recall exactly all the questions that were put to me or the way in which I answered them. And I'm sorry, I know this has become an issue uh, uh, for people in the media. Do you feel in a sense of all this that your enemies have won? You've got people, you know that there are people who don't like you very much out there. There's been obviously this leak to the newspapers about this inquiry. Do you feel your enemies have, have won? No, I don't feel that my enemies have won. I feel that I feel that in taking the action I have, I feel that my reputation and my integrity have won, that the standards that the Prime Minister rightly insists in, on in our government have won and that the government standing with the rest of the country have won. I think all those things are intact. And there is nothing more important to me than my integrity, nothing more important to me than the government's uh, standing. And quite honestly, I'll pay any price to protect those things. And I think I have today in what I've done. Uh, Michael, you've come to know Peter Mandelson very well. Am I right in saying that the Peter Mandelson we saw there, particularly towards the end of the interview, was a very different man? Yes, I think in the jargon he was probably suffering a bit of what they call post-traumatic shock, wasn't he? Um, he can be very feisty at times in interviews, fighting his corner. Today he was very reflective, very ready to talk it all through, to, as it were, expunge what had gone on by wanting to give every explanation for it. And uh, yes, it was a, it was a different and, and very chastened piece of Mandelson from one we've seen in the past. Well, now, two senior resignations in one day. Uh, Tony Blair has major problems, doesn't he? Well, nothing to the problems I think he would have had if uh, both of them had tried to stay on, because the Conservatives had got the bit between their teeth on this one. There were at least three areas that um, they would have pursued. I think the real problem is, though, that for all that new Labour and this government wants to appear to be different from the others, for the moment at least, people will say, well, all these politicians are the same after all, aren't they? And the government will have to work very hard to try and get over that. Thank you, Michael. The whole affair has focused attention on one Victorian home in Notting Hill. Paul Davis reports now on how Mr Mandelson's deal to buy the house finally cost him his job. What is clear is that sometime yesterday, Peter Mandelson, having embarked on a fierce defence of his own integrity and ultimately his political career, decided his position was no longer tenable. Many questions remain unanswered, but the master wheeler dealer's decision to quit coincided with the emergence of more details about the purchase of his London home. The house in fashionable Notting Hill cost just under half a million pounds. Geoffrey Robinson's believed to have lent him more than £370,000. The Britannia Building Society is reported to have lent a further £150,000. Like any borrower, Mr Mandelson would have signed a Britannia mortgage application form. In the final declaration it asked the borrower to sign, 
that I have not arranged any other loan, second mortgage or improvement grant in connection with the property. When asked on yesterday's lunchtime news whether he had declared Geoffrey Robinson's loan, Mr Mandelson replied... I can assure you uh, that I have filled in uh, uh, all my forms and, and in complete conformity with every requirement uh, placed on me. However, just a few hours later, Mr Mandelson was reported to say he could not recall details of an application form filled in two years ago. The Guardian journalist who broke the story says if Mr Mandelson misled the building society, he technically broke the law, but he hadn't expected him to resign. No, I didn't, frankly. I thought this is something that will damage uh, Peter Mandelson and will damage the government because it was a secret arrangement. The Britannia Building Society say by law they're not permitted to release details of Mr Mandelson's account or that of any customer. Paul Davis, ITN. Peter Mandelson was the man who played a bigger role than anyone in creating new Labour, fulfilling Tony Blair's image of what the party should be. Tim Wilcox reports now on a career of success, but one which ended in such controversy. Mandelson, are you pleased with your... For Peter Mandelson, his appointment as Secretary of State in the summer was a just reward for his years of hard work behind the scenes as the modernising architect of new Labour. It was in 1985 that the then TV producer Peter Mandelson was appointed Labour's new press and campaigns director. There will be no stage managed US presidential style conning of people uh, as the Conservatives go in for. Even though Labour lost two subsequent elections, Mandelson, who introduced the Red Rose to the party, masterminded brilliant campaigns. Within three years of being selected for the safe seat of Hartlepool, Peter Mandelson MP made much of his old Labour roots. But as New Labour's master fixer and spin doctor, his ruthlessness was winning him as many enemies as admirers. While Peter could be a fantastically loyal friend, I mean, he could also turn on people very strongly. And I mean, if you crossed him, he wouldn't talk to you for several months. According to those enemies, it was only a matter of time before the grand living grandson of the late Labour cabinet minister Herbert Morrison, himself a master political fixer, would meet his nemesis. <laughs> Tonight, the man whose authoritarian stance as Millennium Dome Supremo led to several key resignations has himself stood down, replaced by Culture Secretary Chris Smith. Tim Wilcox, ITN. To other news now, some of Northern Ireland's most notorious...